And now guys, on to the next clip. So, um, I'm Ines Vanova and I'm guest lecturer here in this channel. If, please subscribe to this channel because if you find it very useful, why not? With notifications. And now we are going to the second part of our application, which is to call our backend. So here, as you can see, we have login and register component. And if I go to my local host, we can see that here I have the form. So here are the URLs for the application and we have to do minor changes to our code in order to work. So I'm going to take this, which is the basic domain, and I'm going to register that in our environment TS. So here I'm going to put this, uh, not this, but this here. I'm going to put it like the main API URL and here in the service, authentication service, I'm going to put this for the second variable. So here I'm going to put slash register, it's going to be here, and the another one will be for the login. So I'm going to put that here also. Okay, so now I have this and I want to experiment what will happen if I call the backend. So I'm going to save that and here I'm going to call uh, first register because I don't have any users. So I'm going to say Ines and here I'm going to say Ines and Ines .com, just for testing purposes and here I'm going to put a password like eight symbols and a character. I'm going to log into the network tab and now I see that there is nothing. So why is that? If I go to the register component I can see something very important that I have said in the previous clip. So here I have to subscribe because this is inobservable. And in order to make the request I have to subscribe to this. And here I'm going to say data is going to another function which will console my data. Okay, so now let me try that again. Okay, I'm refreshing this and I'm saying that here is ms, ms, ms .com. And here I have a password. Okay, let me see that. As you can see, I'm making I'm making this request, and as you can see here in the headers, I have this payload for my reactive form, which is username, email, and password. The backend says that it's okay, so I don't have any response here, but the status is uh, 200 okay, so that makes sense. Let me try uh, to log in with that user and this password. Okay, so I'm going to call my uh, login. And in a minute we're going to do the routing here. Okay, so I'm going to say login. And I'm going to try to log with uh, this newly created user, which was Ines. Okay, let me try that. Okay, I have uh, again, okay response. And here I can see that I have the response, which is with my token, uh, which is going to be very useful in a minute. So, right now I'm going to make a basic routing here. So, as you can see, we have this app routing model here, okay, uh, which is responsible for making our routes. How we can do that? So, here in the array, I have to specify an object which takes path, and this path will be login. And for this path, I have to specify the component. So, again, this component will be my login component. Okay, I'm importing this at the top. So, the second object here will be again path. And here I'm going to have register. And again, I have to do some component here, which will be register component. Okay, and I'm importing that. So, right now I have a very specific task. And this task is uh, very useful because if you don't do this, we're not going to see anything. Here in the app component HTML, I'm going to remove these tags. And the only tag I'm going to use here is the router outlet. So you can think as a string interpolation here because this router outlet allows us to uh, invoke different components without refreshing the page, uh, which makes it spa, uh, basically. So here I'm going to say router outlet and I'm going to save that. If you see here right now, if I go and say uh, we don't see anything here because we haven't specified what to do uh, where uh, when the URL is localhost just uh, this. But if I say slash login, you can see here that my login component is here. If I say register, 
you can see that my register component is here. So we have a working uh, working router. Yeah. Okay. That's very cool. So the second step here is to save this token because it's essential to save the token somewhere. The practice here in the front end is to make in this authentication service another function which is called save token. This uh, save token function will take a parameter, let's say token, and here we're going to evoke the local storage. I'm going to show you in a minute how we can do it. Okay, so set item, I'm going to say that this will be my token and the value of this will be the token from the parameter. Okay, another useful function will be to get the token, get token, and here I'm not going to receive any arguments for this function, I'm going just to return the result from local storage dot get item. And here I'm going to specify which one, which will be the token. So, right now how, how I'm, I'm going to use that. So, on login, when I have successfully logged in, I want to save my token. So basically, if we go here right now to the application local storage, you can see that here we have empty uh, fields, right? But if I change my code and go here and say, okay, after successful login, this dot out service dot save token will be here as this response. We can see that if I again go and log in successfully with a user. So I'm going to go to login page and I'm going to say ns i oh maybe I have a, uh, an error here with the login okay let me see that one more time so I'm going to say authentication service dot save token data okay and I'm going to this authentication service dot save token and I say local storage said item token. Let me just console lock this token in order to see that everything is working properly. Because I've said this is a live calling session, so that means we are going to have a lot of errors, but we're going to resolve them as quickly as possible. So I'm going to say INS123456789. Okay. So right now, if I'm making a query, I have the response, and here I have just the token which is a little bit tricky, I believe. So, here I see an error. Why is this error? That's very interesting. Let me let me delete that and see the network one more time. I'm going to say login and console. As you can see here, I have an error. Okay, so why I have this error? Okay, let me pause the video and just try to see what is going on here with this error because this is a very interesting uh, situation. I believe that maybe a part of the problem is that the token is returned as a plain text. Maybe that is one uh, reason and now we are going to debug that uh, with evil. Okay, so I have talked to evil and I believe that he has uh, fixed it. So let us try. I'm going to go to slash register and register a new user, which will be, let's say, this. Oops, okay. And here I'm going to put a very, very strong password, of course. I'm going to register that user. Okay, we have the 200 and I'm going to log in that user right now. So, let me see. Right now we have application with local storage empty. And if I go and say uh, the correct password here. As you can see, we have token right now and we have object object, which is the first step of this that we uh, already have a date. So if I go here, you can see that right now I have a response which is a token and after that I have the value of the token. So right now I have to go back to my login component and say that I'm going to pass not just the data because this is the object, but the data full token. I want the value which will be the actual token. So I'm going to save that and 
try one more time and I'm going to clear this. And bam, we have it. So here it is. And right now I have the token of the user. So I believe that here in this response, I don't have the email. But that's okay. We don't need it when a uh, user is logged in. So basically we have fixed that and my thought was correct. So the problem was that I have uh, a plain text. I have had a plain text. So right now, let me just check the service. And if there's anything I should remove or clear or do something with it. Okay, save token. Okay, this console log is redundant right now. And we have get token, save token, register, login. Okay, what about your login? Get username, get password. Okay, everything looks cool. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. And the link below, you can check out my channel, which is in Bulgarian. So if you understand Bulgarian language, please join to our family. I'm going to make videos for Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, and so on. See ya.